Hope everyone had a, a good day. We're going to do something tonight that I don't, Miss Amy may know a little bit something different, but I don't think I've ever done what we're fixing to do tonight. When I first went to Lexington as assistant principal, Larry Smith told me, he said, uh, Marty, if you ever want a section of bleachers cleared out, just go sit in them. And it, you know, I kind of looked at him a little bit. And uh, anyway, I didn't say, didn't back, back talk him or nothing, but I just went on and went on through football season. And then come basketball season, me and Daddy would always get their basketball games early. And we was playing down at Lardell County this particular night. And uh, I was going to sit right behind our bench. And there was a lady that had got there before we did, and she was uh, like the first section of the bleachers. She was on the far end of that first section. And so I sat down on the, fir the first part of it. And y'all, she stood up, looked at me, and moved to the other end of the gym. So I thought, well, Larry Smith had something to, he was pretty good. So time went on and uh, came here, and we were at a football game somewhere. We was playing away, and I saw Randy and Jamie Allen sitting up in the bleachers football game, and I went up there, and I said, Randy, you care if I sit with you? And he said, no. And I said, well, it's just one thing. There ain't nobody going to sit around you. Oh, no. So about middle of the second quarter, he leaned over to me and he said, hey, you can sit with me any time. Nobody's sitting. I mean, it was just a hole there. And I said, well, I've had enough sitting. I've got to go stand somewhere. And so I reckon they filled in around him after I left. Uh, if you'll look with me tonight to, and I'll connect that to something here in just a minute. Uh, my Bible says the song of Solomon uh, yours may have uh, has it on one page and on the other one it says Solomon's Song we're going to look at chapter 2 of the Song of Solomon and verse number 4 I don't reckon I have ever preached out of the the Song of Songs the Song of Solomon, Solomon's Song whatever, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it so here we are uh, I'm, I do remember teaching this at the show's Christian, and when I got to it, I heard one of the ninth graders say, oh, this is going to be interesting. So anyway, here we are. Love story between a, uh, the, the church and Christ, a bride and her groom. And we're going to look at chapter 2, verse 4. It says there, he brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, uh, for your many, many blessings that you give us. Thank you, Lord, for you bringing us to a place that we can celebrate you, we can worship you. Thank you for the freedoms, Lord, we have in this country. Lord, there, there's some uh, I see that uh, don't, take up the freedom that we have to be here. There's some that probably wish that we didn't have this freedom. And Lord, uh, but I'm thankful tonight that we do. I'm thankful for the privilege that we can come and meet together as your word tells us to do. And Lord, as we uh, look, look to your word tonight, we look to the Song of Solomon, open our hearts up to it, Lord, that you can, uh, you will fill us with what we need provide us with what we need and and show us lord that uh, how much you do love us and lord again have your way in each one of our lives we thank you in jesus name amen so uh in this love story between this bride and this groom uh, and we can compare that to the the church and christ he said, it says there in the first part of verse 4 that he 
brought me to the banqueting house. Now, before we get too far digging into that, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 2 for just a minute. John chapter 2. And in John chapter 2, that's the chapter that we see that uh, Jesus, at the beginning of it, Jesus is at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And Mary has come to him and says, uh, they have no wine. In other words, I don't know if uh, they didn't think that many people were coming. I, didn't know, I don't know if they didn't, they RSVP'd. But all I know is God knew what was fixing to happen. And uh, so let's start reading in verse 1 of John chapter 2. The third day, and the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Uh, question might be, where's old Joseph? Was he sitting out in the car and didn't want to come in? Was he didn't the anti-wedding? Uh, some thoughts are Joseph's done passed on by this time. Anyway, so Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the, the mother of Jesus said to them, they ain't got none. Now, uh, this day and time, it, that would have been a slap in the face to the host of this event. They've run out. They ran out. And uh, verse 4 says, "Woman, uh, Jesus said to her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Thine, mine hour is not yet come. And what he, she told them in verse 5 should be our goal in life. His mother saith to the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Amen. Whatever he bids you to do, do it. If it's go to a mission field, Go. If it's to preach, preach. If you, whatever. And there were set there, there, there were set there six water, pot, water pots of stone. Now, J. Vernon McGee goes down a road that says these were broken down water pots that wouldn't fit to have anything to do with. So they were just kind of pushed over to the side. And Jesus says, bring them out. And fill them with water. In verse 7. And the last part of verse 7 says there that they filled them to the brim. They didn't overflow them, but they got them up to the very top. Now, did he slap them? Did he slap the water pot? No. He just had them fill them up. And it looks like to me, immediately says, now draw out. Now draw out. Draw out now, in verse 8, and bear until the governor of the feast, and they bear it. Now, the ruler of the feast had thought they'd done, did, they didn't know they'd run out, but he thought they had saved the, ba the best to last. Now, J. Burden McGee paints this picture. Where are them broken down water pots that he wants to fill? And what I'm, uh, first time I ever saw Brother Buck Howard, was it, he was the pastor here, and he preached a sermon from the book of Jeremiah up at Grassy Baptist Church. That's when we were getting together, Good Springs, Springfield, Elgin Methodist, uh, Springfield, Presbyterian, Grassy, New Hope, we was all together. And it'd be at a, a revival week, and it would be at a different church each night. And the pastor, pastors would preach at a different church. In other words, Brother Butler didn't preach at Good Springs. He preached somewhere else. James Waddell didn't preach at New Hope. He preached somewhere else. And Buck Howard preached at Grassy. I think Audie was at Grassy at the time. He preached at a different church. Uh, Happy Valley was in, in on this. Their, their pastor preached at a different place. But the message that Brother Buck brought that night was out of the book of Jeremiah that says this, My people have done two, evil, two evils. They've 
hold them out, hewn them out. Uh, cisterns, broken cisterns that could hold no water. In other words, you might fill them up to the brim like them water pots at John 2, but they was leaking and they couldn't hold. You and I need to realize this. He needs to fill us. Psalm 23, the, the psalmist writes, He anointeth my head with oil. It's not that the cup had a crack in it and it's leaking. My cup runneth over. So what's he telling us here in Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 4? He brought me to the banqueting house. And let me read to you just a little bit about what that means. He brought me to the banqueting house or into it. Literally, it means the house of wine. You say, well, how, what, what significance is that? It was in a celebration, that's where the best was kept. He's made you and I to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. J. Vernon McGee says, in, in this there is a beautiful picture of the church, which will be the bride of Christ. It also reveals the personal relationship in which, which is possible between the Lord Jesus Christ and each one of us individually as believers. We are to come together, Hebrews 10, 25, forsake it not the assembling of ourselves together as a manner in some is, but exhorting one another in so much as you see the day approaching. But as individuals, he's made us as individuals to sit together in heavenly prices in Christ Jesus. You and I, J. Vernon McGee says, you and I as believers will be at that banquet in place by the grace of God. That is when full satisfaction will be made, but already he's brought us to the table of salvation. He's brought us to the table of fellowship with him. He prepares the table before me, as Psalm 23 says, and the table of the word of God, he tells me to eat, and be full. And when we eat of God's word, we're going to do this. We're going to see that he is gracious. We're going to see that he has for us everything that we need. Now, uh, as we turn over to Luke chapter 1, I want to take you back several years before Solomon. When the children of Israel got to complaining, they, of course they complained about everything, but on this particular time they were complaining because they didn't have enough to eat. And he sent manna down each morning, well six days a week. On the sixth day they're supposed to get a double portion and save, uh, save some for the Sabbath day because they weren't supposed to do anything on the Sabbath day. And of course, did some of them listen? No, they those that didn't gather double enough didn't have anything on Sabbath day. And then some gathered more than they needed on day one. And uh, what happened to that? Well, he told them to gather enough on those other days just for that day. And, uh, of course, worms got in it if they didn't. Uh, look down to Luke 1, verse 53. Basketball camp, they told us, of course, did I listen? Uh, Y'all have heard me tell stories about one particular night I didn't. They told us to go to a game hungry. You say, well, well why? Go hungry to where you could be filled. Now, uh, 
It was me and Keith Gully, James's brother, and uh, Mom and Daddy headed to basketball game at Cherokee, Alabama one night. And, uh, you know, that was ringing through my head. Plus, Coach Bailey said, don't eat no fries before the game. Boys, don't eat no fries. And so I followed that one. But uh, two Big Macs and didn't go play a basketball game. I didn't, I didn't uh, you know, I didn't go hungry that night. When we come to church, we ought to come hungry. I don't mean us sitting around with our stomach growling. I mean for spiritual food. Look what Mary says here is recorded by Luke, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He has filled the hungry with good things. And as we find there in Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 4, He brought us to the banquet house. Remember the prodigal son? We talked about him uh, just a few services ago. What what happened when the prodigal son came home? Oh, good to see you. Now get over and get to work. No? No. Go get a bath. Woo! Smelled you before I could see you. Probably did, but no. What happened? put the best robe on him, gave him a ring to wear, killed a fatted calf, and they threw a feast. That boy had got down so low that he was going to eat what the pigs were eating. And then he came to his senses and said, no, I'm going to come back home. Think of the things that, well, I'm going to think about the things. You may not have been there like me. Lowest points in your life. You might not have had none. Bless your heart. Who was we relying on then? Who'd you turn to? As the song says, the only real place that we we're ever going to have is with the Lord. And it says there in Luke one fifty three, He has filled the hungry. Not with junk food, but with good things. And the rich he has sent empty away. Why? Because more than likely they've trusted in the riches. And if you'll look back with me to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 4. Again, he brought me to the banqueting house, the place where the best was kept. Look back to chapter 1, verse 4. This bride says, Draw me, we will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than, more than wine. The upright love thee. And what did he do? After her prayer, draw me and we will run. He brought her, he brings us into the banqueting house. Yesterday, Daddy called and told me he was coming over. He had some mail for us to look at. And uh, Jenna, some of y'all's probably seen some of them that she's put on Facebook. She's been making signs now. Amy, correct me if I'm wrong. Their, their theme in second grade at her school, she's going to be teaching second grade, has got something to do with the rockets and outer space. And the whole, and then she's made poster, the banners for outside her room going down the hall. And uh, so she was sitting in the floor right at the front door making another banner. And I'm going to dare say, nobody but her is going to be under that banner. Now let's go back to some ball games. When I went in, when I was coaching Cloverdale, when I went in, why didn't I set Cloverdale under Mars Hill sign? Why didn't I set Cloverdale under Anderson sign? Why didn't the folks at Cloverdale set under Lexington sign? 
Brooks. The reason we didn't was we was from Cloverdale. Now, I did have some players. Now, Jimmy and Karen, y'all might not understand this. Everybody else might. We were going up to Green Hill to play one night. And uh, I overheard, I, I coach boys and girls, and the girls were in there getting dressed, and I heard some of the boys walking around talking. And one of them looked at the other and said, I just want you to look at that. Coach Mosley has lied to us. And so that piqued my ears up. How, how did I lie to him? He told us we've come to Green Hill, and it says on that floor right there, Rogers. I said, guys, Rogers is in Green Hill. Oh, oh. So why didn't we go in and see it at somebody else's place? Because we were from Cloverdale. And when I got to Lexington, if they had a sign up that said student sections, certain place, where did I want those students to sit? In the student section. Had a few that wanted to be a troublemaker one night, and I said, guys, the student section on the other end, you can either move or I'll move you. And so one by one, they got up and moved, thankfully. Jenna's making a, a banner. I don't think she's through with it. She's put something on it, but I figured, knowing her, she's going to come back and fill in some of the blank space, and nobody else will be standing under that. Well, there is one more up there, but she's not a miss. This said miss, M-I-S-S. -S. There is a Mrs. Mosley, but uh, up there, okay. she's going to be the only one under that because she's the only Miss Mosley there. And that's what her banner says. Watching a parade now, we were up in New York back in uh, 2011 on Veterans Day. And uh, the Veterans Day parade started and it just kept coming. We went back to the hotel, took a nap, came back out uh, a couple hours later, Veterans Day Parade was still going. Each group, y'all seen parades, each group, each band has what in front of them? Has a banner in front of them. Why does people walk behind the correct banner? Because that's who they belong he put a banner over her and Christ puts a banner over us a banner that we ought not be ashamed of a banner that uh, we ought to say hey we are his J. Vernon McGee says the banner of an army as, uh, for example, the banners of the Roman legions was an emblem of conquest. The Son of God still goes forth to war. There's a battle to die for the souls of men. And he says, I remember how I resisted him. I shall never forget the excuses I made for not going to a young people's conference. I thought they were a bunch of sissies who were going there, and I didn't want to go with the, that crowd. I wasn't interested, but, you know, he opened up the way. And the first thing I knew, I was there. Before I knew it, I had made a decision in my heart for him. His banner over me was a banner of conquest. Now, y'all have seen them. I've watched Lexington Band a bunch of times marching a parade in the they have that banner in front of them telling everybody the Lexington Marching Band is coming. What's our banner? Well, it says there, his banner over us is love. Turn over with me to Matthew chapter number 3. 
in verse number 17. The banner could be seen of as a uh, emblem of protection. And when I looked up banner, I got uh, many different things. It could be a flag, it could be this, it could be that. But one writer says the, the, this banner is the symbol of his conquering love. Under it, she was a triumphant entrance. She has a triumphant entrance. Our liberty of access comes through his prevailing love. He loved me and gave himself for me. The king sets his banner over all his possessions. It is the banner of love because all the forces of love in his kingdom are represented by it. Now Jesus has been baptized by John the Baptist. And as he comes up out of the water... They say a, uh, a spirit of God descended on him like a, like a dove. And then they hear this voice. And basically this voice says, he's mine. And those of us who are saved, he's done us the same way. He's put us under this same banner. And this voice in Matthew 3, 17 says, and the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Turn over with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And we're going to read verse 15. Remember this verse. Romans 12, verse 1 says that we are to lay down our lives a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. John 14, verse 15. So the bride in Song of Solomon says, he's brought me into the banqueting hall, the banqueting room, and his banner over me is love. Jesus says in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, if you're going to be under that banner that I've got for you, keep my commandment. Keep my authoritative prescriptions. Keep my commandments. Matthew Henry says, Christ is the captain of our salvation. Now, I don't know when they started doing this, but uh, it's been, I think, since me and Ronnie's been in school. But they make a, a sign every week for the boys to run through. And I've been to some places where they've got, uh, I'm thinking it's smart, but y'all might think of it a different way. They've got some, it's Velcro. In other words, they're going to run through the same sign every time and they can just Velcro it back together. But uh, unless Lexington's changed, they, they make out a new one each week and it's about usually about the opposing team. has something to do with the, let's stomp them in the ground and just really just let them have it, that kind of thing. And if I remember right, the captains go out to the middle, do the towing calls, and then they wait on them to get back to run through that sign, all of them together. Or, if you will, to run through the banner together. 
Matthew Henry says, Christ is the captain of our salvation. And he enlists all his soldiers under that one banner, that banner of love. He has conquered me with his love, overcome me with kindness, and this banner, this is the banner that's over me. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. The, the last call I got from... Uh, I went to see this new kidney doctor, and he looked at me, and he said, uh, how much water you drink? Well, during the school year, I usually get at least two bottles of water in. He just starts shaking his head. I said, does Coke's, does Cola's count? Water. How much water are you drinking? You need to be drinking 64 ounces a day. And I was like, oh, four bottles of water. And he's sitting there. Yeah. Last call I got was, uh, you need to be drinking 90 ounces of water. Now, that's his prescription. Y'all think it'd be a good idea for me to do that? Or just, nah, that's it. Nah, just do my own thing. Well, here's why I'm thinking about it. He's got, I hope, my best interest at heart. Because I was looking at the latest stuff from uh, my patient portal, and they done sent that to the Mayo Clinic. And came there. Then he called me and tells me that. I don't know who Mayo is, but I've always thought they were pretty good folks. So I'm going to try to do that. Now let's apply that to God. If you love me, keep my commandments. I think I'm going to strive to do that too. Because his banner over me is love. He loved me enough to give his son to die in my place. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are. Thank you, Lord, to, for you uh, bringing us into the banqueting house and placing a banner over us, telling us where to sit. And that, that banner over us is your love for us. And nothing tops that. Lord, have your way in each one of our lives tonight. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's